Okay, it's time for the big brother reveal. Hello, my friends. I am currently sitting on a beach soaking up the shade. It's so funny, it keeps moving. So I was in the sun and Elton was in the shade. I keep putting him in the shade. Look at how cute he is. Just like, just enjoying life. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so we keep like moving him into the shade, but I am not here alone. You might notice there's some other towels around me. And yes, we have literal bath towels with us because we had no beach towels. We're making it work. And that is because my brother and his fiance are here. They are currently getting changed and they're gonna brave it in the cold water because they're like, they do triathlons. They do like, they do that kind of stuff. They're down for the cold water. They're about to embark on a six month backpacking adventure around South America. They're those kind of people and more power to them. I'll be sitting here with my true crime podcast laying in the sand. But today you're gonna get to meet them. So I asked on my Twitter and my Patreon if you guys have any questions for them or anything. This is probably gonna be part vlog part maybe sit down chit chat i am so excited for you guys to finally meet my older brother brady i'll give you some quick facts brady's a scorpio my parents came up with the name brady it was they were going between brady and killian <laughs> thank god you didn't do that i still like killian no i like brady way better brady brady burke what do you think elton john was like what i like that name no brady burke it has a celebrity ring to it mm -hmm. and uh brady was an old family name like a, the last name, right? Yep. The family last name, I made it the first name. He's been living in Europe for five and a half years now, and I don't think he's coming back. Nope. He lived in Dublin, now he lives in London, and he loves the lifestyle. He loves the lifestyle. European lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He More got a rest. dual degree um, in business, and um, I think it's called Media Information Technology. Yes, MIT. MIT and he's like a very charitable person. Him and his fiance are like both very conscious. They're very giving, they're very sweet people. They're like the perfect couple. We always said that the girl my brother introduced us to would be the girl he married. Not that he didn't date before, but he was not gonna introduce us to just anyone. He was gonna save, save that. And then one day my parents were on their way to one of his friend's family weddings well, he was in Europe. They were like the representatives. And he calls them when they're on their way. And he's like, just so you know, like, if anybody like mentions it, I am seeing someone. <laughs> and we were like, really? Really? And lo and behold, they're now getting married. So they're getting married in the south of France in June 2023. She is from France. So she has the cutest French accent, but like flawless English. I maybe three times heard her say, What's the word in English? Like, it's incredible. She speaks other languages too. She does, she's so smart. They're both like very smart, very talented, hardworking people, good living spirits. They're just wonderful. I don't know if I mentioned this, but Brady's fiance's name is Leah, L-E-A, not to be confused with Leah, L-E-A-H. I think it's such a cute name, I love it. I adore her. She is two months older than me. We both are obsessed with friends, like the TV show. And for having friends too, you know? It's always good. If anything happens, I'm keeping Leia. That's all I'm saying. Their, oh, their <laughs> ship name is Brea. I used to always say La Brea because, you know, La, like LA is French and she's French. And La Brea is a street in Los Angeles. So I used to always call them La Brea. Haha, uh -huh, I'm so funny. Mom wants to go take cute photos of them being a couple in the water. So I'll cut this off here and we shall continue and you can meet them. Okay, they're just swimming still, so my mom doesn't want to interrupt. So I get a few more moments to keep talking and we know how I love to talk, so. Oh yeah. I'm gonna take every second I have. Now that your voice is back. Exactly. We have one week of vocal rest. So I gotta keep up, catch up on all the talking I missed out on them. Spare me, please. <laughs> I was, when I that was, was on, very restful. Yeah, when I was on vocal rest, I knew I was seeing my brother this week and I was like, oh, he would love it if I was on vocal rest. <laughs> I've always been the annoying talkative sister. Are we surprised? No. So I've been making content on the internet for eight years. That's wild. Eight years of my life has been captured on this platform. And my brother is a more private person and I've always respected that, which is why I've never had him in videos. I knew, I knew eventually I'd trap him into it. And you guys know gift giving is my love language. I say it a million times. And you know, my mom and my dad got their, got their big special thing. 
I, I mean, I obviously treat them to stuff all the time, but like I wanted to give them each like, one big special. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but I wanted to like treat them to all each to one like big special thank you for being so supportive and wonderful as a family and like share my success with them because I am only successful because of my family. And so, you know, I got my mom teeth. I got my dad his dream watch. I could not figure out for years. Like, what am I gonna get my brother? I had a budget in mind and I've been trying to figure it out. And a year ago, they mentioned how they were saving up to quit their jobs and go backpacking for six months before they get married. I realized I could help fund that trip. And my kind of rules around like, I think he's getting a little hot. Well, he's just kind of, what's my, what's my gift? Let's go put you in the shade. Right this way, sir. It's actually, thankfully, not very hot today. It's yeah, sunny. very lucky. It's sunny, but it's and not a nice hot. breeze. Don't forget, you have water here. Come on, me. Hello. Sorry, just being a mom. Just put my sunscreen on. They're out of the water now, so I've moved over here to keep whispering about them. Sorry, this video is all over the place. Classic. Okay, years ago, I asked my brother, like, what would you want? A, a lifelong gift to be. And I told him it has to be either a physical thing that will... <laughs> I told him it either had to be a physical thing that would last a lifetime or a memory that would last a lifetime. And he was like, oh, like we could like do a charity bike ride and donate it. And I was like, Brady, Brady, I'm gonna stop you right there. Love the thought, but for once in your life, we need to make it about you and not other people. Cause he constantly makes everything about other people, which is what makes him so wonderful. I want to do something for him. So today I will be giving them their check to help fund their trip of six months of memories. I'm, I'm, I'm luring him. I'm like, I've got a surprise for you, but you've got to be in a video. And so, you know, twisted did it. his arm. Twisted the arm. Twisted the old arm. And uh, yeah, so he's going to be in this video and say hi to you guys to get his surprise. And I think they'll be very happy because they're saving up for a wedding and trying to fund the trip. So I think this will be a nice... I mean, I'm sure he knows it's coming. He's known for years that I had a budget set aside for him for whatever he wanted, so I'm sure he knows what it is, but still, it's fun. Okay, we just had lunch, and now we're at a winery. I'm gonna kind of liquor them up, you know, get them loose-lipped, so we'll give you the real tea. <laughs> the wine has arrived. She hasn't drunk any of it yet, but you'd think she has. Mm -hmm. um, despite how much wine it looks like we're drinking, it equals less than one glass of wine, so. We might need to do this a few times. Okay, it's been a long day. It's like 6 p.m. My brother Brady's out there like frantically writing down questions from Twitter and Patreon. You guys didn't disappoint. I mean, I know you very well, so I knew exactly the kind of questions you were gonna ask. But he was like, are they gonna be like yes, no questions? Or like, like what's my favorite color? And I was like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> of course, it's yeah. like, what's like a life lesson you learned from having a blind sister? It's like deep. Again, I know you guys. I knew this is what you were coming with. Um, So he's prepping out there. I got this card. And it says, there is beauty up ahead. And it's shiny. I can see there's shiny yeah. stuff. And there's trees and a big tall bridge with day. It's it's painted uh, by hand. And it's got a train going across it through the mountains on a big railway track. Very cute. And my mom was like, what do you want me to write on it? I was like, I want to write it. Writing, I don't do it anymore, ever. Literally ever. So, but I thought it would be like, Cute and sentimental. Mm -hmm. He'll probably throw it out tonight, but I thought it'd be cute and sentimental. <laughs> it's probably more like me. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote it. Don't judge me, okay? I did my darndest. I'm going to spoil the surprise for you guys right now. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Here oh. is $10,000 on me. Enjoy your travels and thank you for being the best brother I could have, Molly. I realized oh. progressively as I got down, there was less room for me to finish what I wanted to say. It's so. beautiful. Um, obviously, it's metaphorical. There's no money in here. I'm doing a bank transfer. <laughs> like, you know, doing a little bank wire. So there's no actual money in here. But it's, you know, it will be coming. So. Uh, you know. mm, nasty. God, I haven't done this in so long. You know what glue's made from, right? Ew, yes. <laughs> Get me a gin and tonic. <laughs> okay. It's time for the big brother reveal. He's checking to see if there's food in his teeth. I feel the tension building in the air. The suspense, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! Here he is! Welcome to the hot seat. How are you feeling? Are we filming? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought this was a warm up. No, no, you're here. It's the moment, it's time. Okay. It's, it's really best to ambush. Yes. Catch you off guard so you'll be genuinely yourself. <laughs> 
the, the best thing to remember is the first year of YouTube videos on somebody's channel is not really who they are, so you probably are not gonna see my real brother in this video. You're gonna see the awkward, oh my god, I'm on camera for the first time, brother. So here he is. This is Brady. Woo! Hey, Brady! Everybody hey, run applause for Brady! Brady. Yay! Hey, Brady. Brady. Peter, join in! Oh, my Gelton's all excited too. Yay! Oh, I love claps! <laughs> okay, so. We've got a ton of questions. We are not gonna get through them all or this would be a four part series and I am not giving him a big enough gift to compensate him for that much time. So let's jump in with um, the most controversial question of them all and arguably what I am most intrigued by. Which of my guide dogs is your favorite? And I note that Elton John has walked over for this moment. Um, and I would also like to mention that you will be adopting Elton John in his retirement years, but no pressure. I think I have an inkling. What's What, what do you think? Hmm. Uh, so I'd say that's kind of like asking which is your favorite nephew or sibling or something. You're never supposed to answer. But I might go with Gallup. Oh, okay. Oh. Really? He was always very happy when I came into the house. <laughs> yeah, big, big greeting. He always felt the most uh, warm to me. Elton did sigh, I'll mm -hmm. note. <laughs> Elton's very new. We haven't bonded. Yes, yet. You, had, you didn't get much time with Ben or Elton. I thought you were going to say Gypsy. Because I felt like Gyp you like lived with Gypsy the longest. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Do we have some more questions, Peter? What was it like for you when I got big on social media? When would you consider you a big? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when would you consider I got big? I feel like maybe like the Casey Neistat video. I think that's when yeah, like, sure. cause I didn't tell people I did social media. And that's when a lot of people like from my, on my yeah. Facebook page were like, oh my God, wait, I just saw you in a Casey video. Like I feel like that's maybe when okay. people realized I did it. I don't know. What, what is it like for you having a sister that's like in the public eye? Hmm. I mean, probably since I was like 18, you've been doing pretty big talks and speeches and relatively well known, even if it was on a smaller scale. Uh, so it's probably, it wasn't like a moment where it was like out of nowhere mm -hmm. that happened. Probably the weirdest thing has been like random colleagues or people I meet for the first time. They're like, oh my God, are you Molly's brother? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's always been funny, particularly like in people about four to five years younger than me. That seems to be where your yeah, that would make sense. Your target audience is that would make sense. Uh, so that's always been a bit funny and weird, and they usually have a moment of like, "Wow, I'm meeting someone like someone super famous's brother," and you're like, and I, mm -hmm. I kind of have very little reaction to it. I, I'm not very engaged in the YouTube world. I don't really follow much. I, half the time you mention these people, and I have no idea who yeah, they are. Yeah. So I haven't been maybe as aware of the intricacies of how big you've gotten at certain phases. Yeah. He's very chill about the whole thing. Even when I was like, I'm going to be on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. He was like, it's cool. cool. And I was like, <laughs> you read his book? He's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. Someone needs to keep you grounded. <laughs> yeah. So he keeps me humble. Um, okay. One of the questions that I feel like overwhelmingly came up was just like, what was it like growing up with a blind sister? Granted, you didn't grow up without one. So hard to compare. Um, but like, what what was your perception of having a blind sister as a child versus your perception of having a blind sister as an adult? Well, will start with the last part. I think maybe as a child, you were still figuring a lot of things out. So there's like just lots of, I don't know. Change. A lot. Yeah, change and just trouble with day-to-day -day interactions and new things. Getting a guide dog instead of a cane, learning how to do different school things, navigating, mm -hmm. walking around. Restaurants are always a challenge. And then maybe now you're much more confident in all of those things. So when we go to restaurants or when we do anything, it's just very normal now where yeah. you know exactly what you're how to help looking myself. for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think you're much more confident uh, in just everything you're doing, which is great to see. That would probably be the biggest change. I'll never forget, actually one of the questions was favorite childhood memories, and this is my favorite one actually just came to me, but it's totally for selfish reasons, I will admit. My brother used to like never understand why I couldn't like cut my meat or why I'd be kind of handsy with my food, like touching my food with my hands. And then we went to Noir, which was a restaurant in Toronto where everybody had to eat fully in the dark. Aye. And after that, he was like, I, I get it. <laughs> That was a good experience. Yeah, 
So that was that was a moment when that's my favorite because I was like, haha, he understands me now. <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned. My par my parents and my brother were like struggling through the whole meal, and I was just like. <laughs> like eating flawlessly like it was just totally normal. So I was thinking about this because I do think and I think I was describing this part of one of the answer, other answer questions about the calories describing Leia like what it's like with Molly. I think there's probably a lot of just like small things that like a lot of families would do that we probably didn't do growing up or we stopped doing things like movie nights mm -hmm. or board game nights that just aren't very fun for you or yeah. Ended poorly. Uh, that might have just been because you were very competitive. <laughs> like, not wrong. That is not wrong. I still am, honestly. But definitely a few of those things were like household staples for people that our family just kind of did at one point and maybe and just then stopped. It stopped. Yes, I would agree. Or like, phased out. Yeah, we used to do a ton of game, board game, and card game nights. And movie nights, we used to do family like bike rides, and they all bike rides, yeah. slowly shifted over time to like instead of the four of us going bike riding, it was like my mom or my dad and I on a tandem, and then you and mom yes. on your bikes, or like kind of like yeah, stopping doing like game nights slowly because I could no longer play, and accessible games didn't really exist back then, like things we like just that. Figure out other things to do as a family. Yeah, do you want to rattle off some other sure, ones? Sure, we have actually a late breaking question coming from a Peter John. <laughs> um, uh, it is uh, so. Um, during your um, your formative years, which parent did you find more supportive? Your <laughs> oh my god! Mother, your overbearing mother or your loving father? Judge, I find the question to be leading. <laughs> I find the question to be leading the witness. <laughs> my dad is currently making us gin and tonics because we are a classic Irish family. I digress. We continue on. You broke policy. How did you meet, and where did you work? We probably met about six months or so after I moved to Dublin. So I moved to Dublin. I don't know. I think I was twenty six. Uh, a little while ago now, and got a job at Facebook there. Uh, obviously that was where we had passports because of mum. Uh, so it was always something I've been thinking about was moving to Ireland, and then I got this cool opportunity just sort of randomly uh, to get a job at Facebook. Uh, thought it would be interesting to move abroad and try something new. Uh, so it was kind of like a sales, account management, consulting type role at Facebook, and then Leia showed up. I was doing the same role for the French team, and yeah, I think I started in September um, 2017, uh, 18. Um, and actually remember I went into the office before starting, I think it was a Friday and I was starting on a Monday, and I had a friend who was already working there, so was walking around the office, showing me around, and then there was Brady, Friday, 5 p.m., still working, and he was at his a desk. Saying, dedicated like, worker, very dedicated folks. Worker. And we introduced. Romance bloomed from there. And one of the questions was, what do they do for work? And the answer is jobless, but for good reason. As I mentioned, they both recently quit their jobs to go on a backpacking adventure. But if you did still have a job, what would it be? So I was actually still working at Facebook now. So I have been five years, two years in Dublin doing sales. And I moved to London doing sports partnerships. So working with all the big football club so I was like a little French woman soccer. working oh yeah soccer sorry <laughs> for all the big football clubs in Europe so that was interesting uh, and then I moved to a product marketing role uh, in the last two years they're very smart <laughs> uh, so I was most recently at a ed tech company 150 employees or so in South Asia but based in London and my role there was a product manager so I work with a team of engineers and we kind of build the mobile app. One question I thought was really interesting as well was given you had a blind sister, well, still have, I'm still here and still blind. And I guess we'll ask you as well since you're here and now have a blind sister-in-law almost. <laughs> How do you think you maybe think about accessibility in a different way than the average person might? You worked so I mean, on it. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, uh, come on. Well, I, mean, obviously, I know, I was like, come on, come I know on. You, you have some good stuff here. Day-to-day yeah. -day interactions, I think it's more obvious. Like, I would recognize it more. Like, I don't think many people have ever heard a screen reader. Still asked every single day in my TikTok comments, how do you reply to the comments if you're blind? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm just, I was exposed to it a lot growing up. And, yeah. like, Dad was obviously very passionate about technology, too, so he was always getting you into that. Uh, and then when I started getting into more of this, like, building side of technology, so working with the engineering, with the computer engineers, I saw this opportunity to work on accessibility, and I think I probably just more readily recognized how painful it is when you know a mobile app or website or something just 
not built at all for everyone. Yeah. So that kind of resonated with me. I thought it'd be really interesting. I think it came naturally to me to work on that stuff a bit more. So yeah, I think I probably naturally think about that more than the typical uh, person working in technology. Or like has. you, you see it without having to think about it. Like yeah. it's just like obvious to you. Whereas a lot of people would have to like intentionally try to see it. Yeah. I think like for me, the first time I really like realized a little bit more and like understood a little bit more was when we went on holidays together mm -hmm. and on the cruise, like it was so, like I realized like the, the panel, the elevator, the, yeah, the, the elevator buttons, but also the turning the lights off in yeah. your room and the fact that that was inaccessible, mm -hmm. like all of those little things I never th really thought about. And I think the way you frame things as well on like the Uno, Uno cards, like mm -hmm. let's just build them for everyone and then like the same as a sidewalk like the you know you like making things more accessible so there were a few things i was so very impressed with how you navigated the cruise ship i was like molly is it left she's like no no it's right i was like oh shit. i was always lost on this boat and you were navigating it so well so you discovered like a new whole new world that i didn't know at all. There's an interesting question from a B Irk. Oh, shut up. He's a interested -irk. in which of your parents was more likely <laughs> supportive. <laughs> You're so silly. Cheering your formative years. Cheers. 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 This is Brady's first and likely only video because it might have traumatized him. <laughs> That's why we're providing booze. Oh, oh. Oh, well, there's definitely a few good ones. Yeah, I have some other good ones. Have you ever walked with one of my guide dogs. So I definitely walked with them on a normal leash, but I've never walked with them in harness. I don't even think I would consider it. I think that would be like a violation of trust, probably with the dog as well, might really confuse them. Mm -hmm. He knows the rules without me even having to say it. You would never let anybody use your guide dog. That is not you. Yay. No, none of my family has ever until recently when my mom tried it, but it wasn't my dog that she tried. Also, do you guys have pets? Not ours. My <laughs> parents have pets. Would like to have some pets in the future. We've been a bit moving around everywhere, so not like wouldn't be fair to have pets at the moment. And you will. Yay! <laughs> they are adopting Elton John when his career is finished. Obviously, they were going to adopt Ben when his career was finished, but life had other plans and he's in the right place for him. But they will be taking Elton John. I will fly I mean, him over. I wouldn't be so confident on that, but... <laughs> yeah. It's a nice idea in theory. Hey, I'm taking him. Don't you back out now. He's yours. We do really like dogs. And cats, because lavender's coming your way too. Will you, this is a loaded question, coming from the Burke clan, ever be moving to North America again? There's no right answer, but there is. Go. <laughs> Depends if my, if my mom is watching this video on <laughs> It's a no. <laughs> she probably would have dropped with the English around five minutes ago. She's like, what are they saying? Um, why not? We'll see, I think. Yeah, I think we're definitely open to it. Obviously, I'd like to get home closer to friends and family. Aww. Uh, the issue now being that friends and family now live in two different parts of the Yes, <laughs> that definitely made it a bit more complicated. You guys so who are you around. picking? Friends or family? <laughs> we actually had initially, we were hoping to come back to Canada around this time, but then COVID sort of messed up our uh, schedules because the traveling we wanted to do a few years ago. So that all got pushed back a bit, but I'd say we're still uh, quite open to it. A question that, um, I don't know if I got this name right, I think they're Slavic. It's a PJB <laughs> Hello? <laughs> it sounds like end, your guys. name. Guys, it's never going to end. I'm interested to know which of your two parents was the most supportive. <laughs> We're still trying to get to that, aren't we? Isn't it obvious? Sure, you're up, Brady. Brady, would you like to answer? 